All right, good morning. Can everybody hear? All right, uh, so we'll get started real quick. Um, I will start to share my screen. All right, this, all right. So good morning, thanks for listening today. Uh, today we have about a 30, uh, 30 minute webinar scheduled uh, where we hope to shed a little bit of light on how the inventory and supply optimizers work together in the SAP and IBP system. So today we're gonna play the role of a company supplying all of the Target and Walmarts for the Super Bowl party um, attendees, customers who really like a 12 pack of cola. All right, so my name is Anthony. I'm an analyst with SCM Connections. Um, I focus on inventory optimization in the consumer product industries. I have experience in database management, optimization models, and experience in um, operations management and logistics and distribution. I also hold a bachelor's from the University of Illinois. Uh, Lauren, do you wanna talk about yourself? Yeah, hi everyone, um, I'm Lauren. I'm also an analyst with SCM Connections. I focus mainly on demand planning and supply optimization in consumer products industries. And I've experienced in different analyses, um, database management, optimization models, which we're gonna see a little bit of today. And I'm going to receive my Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering uh, this June. All right, so today uh, our overview for today uh, we're going to do a little bit of an introduction to the company uh, then i'll run into inventory uh, lauren will run over supply and then we'll do uh, our example of moving the supply chains for our super bowl sunday uh, then we'll do a live system demo and followed by a short little summary at the end all right so about stm connections uh, we're a leading north american system integrator we specialize in supply and inventory optimization that we're going to see today uh, and then also demand planning. Our team has an average of 17 years of supply chain experience. We have served over 31 clients globally. Uh, and what I'd really like to highlight on this is that we are an SAP recognized expert in supply chain management. So this is cool because this was a customer uh, requested award. So our clients told SAP that they were happy with what we gave them. SAP then took that and gave us the first United States awarded SAP recognized expert in supply chain management. So we are extremely proud of that. All right, so inventory optimization. So what, what is inventory optimization? It uses multi-stage uh, inventory targets to buffer against uncertainties like forecast error and supply and service variability. It optimizes stocking levels while balancing the risk and costs effectively. It uh, aims to meet or hopefully exceed customer service levels. So making sure that all of your customers receive their products on time. And then it provides uh, your target inventory position for your stocking levels. So out of your entire stock, it shows you what your target inventory position is made up of and the level it should be at. Then it also, provides a cost reduction in inventory for this entire supply chain. Um, so you might not have a reduction at one site, but globally across your entire supply chain, making um, happier customers uh, with a decrease in inventory costs, uh, making an increase in overall profit, which is the goal for every company. Hi, yeah, so a little bit about the supply optimizer. Um, through mixed integer linear programming, it takes into account different constraints and produces a cost optimal feasible plan. Um, you can either set it to maximize profit or maximize delivery, it's just two different modes that it can focus on. Um, and as I said, it takes into account these different constraints. So it'll take into account hard constraints that really cannot be violated, such as capacity constraints but you can also set different penalty costs that are associated uh, with different actions that um, you can personalize to your own business model, such as customer non-delivery rate, and you can set those costs to be whatever you would like um, in 
for example, customer non-delivery, you could set it to be extremely high. So the optimizer takes that into account and tries everything it can to not uh, violate that action. It effectively balances supply and demand, like I said, with um, uh, and provides you basically with a cost optimal plan that is feasible. And it not only plans for production and distribution, but also procurement and really looks at your supply chain as a whole and holistically. It doesn't plan individually in silos, it plans um, with the whole network in mind. All right, so our real world example in moving the chains on Super Bowl Sunday. So our situation, uh, we have an expected surge in soda demand uh, that we did not plan for, plan accordingly last year um, in February to coincide with the Super Bowl. So we need to make sure that all of our customers at home um, get their stock um, expectations met by producing uh, inventory stocking levels. So our complication, supply and inventory planners need to properly set the safety stock levels um, and schedule production. So we need to make sure that our warehouses, our Target and Walmart have their uh, projected stock prior to the Super Bowl so that people and customers can go purchase it prior to the Super Bowl. Finally, resolution, we need to utilize the inventory and supply optimizers that we're going to show today to plan for the Super Bowl increase in demand. So just a little bit about our supply network. Um, as you can see, we have one plant in Mexico, which is where our products are manufactured. Then it is shipped to one of two regional DCs. Each regional DC ships to two local DCs, and each local DC is supply um, to different stores, which is Target and Walmart at, in their respective region. So now we're going to go into the IVP system and show you a live demo. Um, Anthony is going to start us off here. All right, so we're going to just click over into Excel. And as you can see from this, this is just your normal Excel interface. Um, so what's great about SAP, they knew that a lot of our users today are really super users of Excel. So they created this IBP ribbon at the top that has the all of these new icons um, shown on, on the ribbon that is really just a bunch of Excel um, tabs that you can use for the IBP. So it's your normal Excel just with an extra little addition on the end. All right, so here's our demand inputs. We're gonna go over the inputs for inventory optimization first, and then we'll see the results. Uh, so demand inputs, uh, you have your demand forecast, so the forecast that you expect to see as you can see in January, we see an increase of about 4,000 units um, expected for those people who like to get there early. They like to plan ahead for their Super Bowl parties. Then we have an increase of another uh, 8,000 units to up to 22,000 units. So these people who might be the day of, the day before, like myself, for example, I really like to go last minute to get my soda for my Super Bowl party. So you can see in our demand forecast, we have some seasonality for just the Super Bowl expectations on the 2020 and 2021. So then we have the demand forecast error CV, which is really, um, the error is just a, a measure of uncertainty. So what we expect the demand forecast to be off of by standard deviation. Uh, and then our target service level. So what percentage that we expect our increase or our incoming demand um, to be met for our customers. So for example, we expect to service 90% of our customers until the uh, Super Bowl, where we bump that up to 99%. So we expect to service 99% of our customer service level. Next, we have our lead times. Um, <clears throat> so we have a production lead time, transportation lead time, and then both have error CVs, like I already talked about before. So as you can see on the Mexico plant down below, we have a production lead time. And the production lead time is just a number of periods it takes to finish a product. So in order to fulfill um, an order of COLA, we would need to plan ahead about three weeks. So one week for the production, and then one week to move the production from our Mexico plant to one of our hub DCs. So either West Coast or East Coast. And then one more week after that, in order to move it from one of these hub DCs to one of these locations over here. 
So we need at least three weeks prior to the Super Bowl in order to get our product to those distribution centers. And these, this is our uh, transportation cost rate. So this is just the weight that affects uh, our overall transportation. As you can see, our Mexico plant, uh, there's a, we put the weight of two and that just goes into your inventory optimization showing how much uh, inventory stocking, uh, safety stock that you need. So once all, all of our inputs are done, we're gonna run our inventory optimization. And I have already run this. Um, I ran the global multi-stage inventory optimization, which is just, uh, it optimizes your safety stock globally and simultaneously across all of your products and locations of your supply chain. Uh, while it's doing this, it considers your uncertainties, your demand uncertainty, your supply uncertainty, um, your lead times, your costs, and your service levels. So it takes all of that into account and gives you this global multi-stage inventory optimization. But like I already said, I already ran that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the target inventory components, which what that does is it's an operator to calculate the types of inventory that you have in your total inventory. So whether you have uh, cycle stock, what, um, how much on-hand stock you have, pipeline stock, et cetera, that we're gonna show later. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And this is Excel, but it runs through the cloud base. So as long as you have a good Wi-Fi signal, um, it should be rather quickly, or pretty quick. So we're gonna check on the status. And it is in process. All right, and it just finished. As you can see, didn't take too long, about 10 seconds. So next we're gonna go click our results tab and see where we lie with our inventory optimization. So as you can see here, our recommended safety stock, we have an increase in recommended safety stock for our New Jersey distribution center for our COLA 12 pack. So you can see that here, it increases slightly in January, planning ahead for our Super Bowl and then increases another 1,000 units for um, February for our Super Bowl. And then you can add this, these attributes, these key figures in to your planning area. So uh, I added our value so we can see how much money we have invested in our safety stock based on each product location. So as you can see in February of 2020, we have $1,135.30 invested in just our recommended safety stock. And then another cool thing here, you can set up an alert to show if you have safe, uh, safety stock at zero, it will show you a little one in red right here, allowing the inventory planner to come in, see an alert and say, okay, I need to go take a look at February of 2020 to make sure that we are set up for success in our safety stock. So next we're gonna see um, how much safety stock we have based on our uncertainties or our variabilities. So this graph is, is really interesting because you can see visually where you need to try to focus your attention on your stock. So as you can see, recommended safety stock is 378, but our demand variability is 1,197. So we need to focus our attention in order to um, decrease our overall safety stock. We need to focus our attention on demand variability rather than the 10 units of supply variability. I wouldn't expect anyone to really waste any time on that. So next we'll go through the inventory components. Um, and this is what I talked about earlier with the calculate target inventory. Um, as you can see, our numbers did change a little bit. Um, through the graph, you can see how much uh, on-hand stock, recommended safety stock, cycle stock, et cetera, we have uh, in our system. So. If I'm going to go over to our Super Bowl weeks, you can see our increase pretty drastically in on-hand stock. So we're making sure that we have enough stock in our warehouses in order to combat the amount of customers that we expect to be ordering our 12 pack of cola. And finally, we have our safety stock components. So what's cool about this page is if I'm a supply planner, I'm gonna scroll over to our Super Bowl, which is right here. And I see that in weeks six and seven, which is right prior to the Super Bowl, um, we have a min of 150. So I wanna make sure that we 
have at least 150 units in, this, in our um, inventory. We have a max of 1,000. So these are something that you can set up prior to running this. Uh, and this, those are just something that the supply planner or the inventory planner are going to know um, the mins and maxes. Uh, and then if I'm a supply planner, I see that we have a final of 423 and 400, I'm sorry, uh, 438 and 423 respectively. So I wanna say, okay, I like that, but I think we're gonna get a lot more demand in for those two weeks. So I'm gonna come in here and override that. And like I said before, it's just Excel. So I can enter in 500. I can copy that over. And as you can see, it's blue saying that I changed it. So I wanna just save the data and say that we are going to plan instead of our recommended safety stock of 438 and 423, I wanna plan a little bit more and put 500 units of each in there. So as you can see, our graph went up showing our override and now our final safety stock is equal to my override. So now after that, I'm going to pass it over to Lauren to show you supply. Yeah, thank you. Um, so now we're gonna go into the supply um, template. I'm gonna start looking at the customer demand because I think it is really important and just kind of reiterating our scenario and our situation again, um, we can see that we have this demand value and this is based off, you know, going through the SNOP process in demand forecasting. Um, and as Anthony said, we have this spike in February in demand. So we know that we have a spike in demand in February due to the Super Bowl. And we know that we want to have our units, our products on the shelves. Um, so that people can come in and buy our products to stock their parties with. Um, we don't want to ever stock out and have our customers go and buy a competitor's products. Um, below it is the customer receipt. So that's what the image, the supply optimizer sort of plans for. What, what, when do we deliver which product, which is the Cola 12 pack to which customer? and that is going to be populated after I run it. And then the demand shortfall is essentially just the difference between the consensus demand and what the supply optimizer um, plans for our, um, our supply to that customer. So now I'm gonna go into the inventory tab, zoom out a little bit. And the first thing that we have to do is run a copy operator. So with this, we are basically taking Anthony's output and um, his output of his essentially inventory plan that is optimized. And we're going to copy it into our input, um, which is the supply safety stock input so that we know um, we can kind of go in here and see this manual checkpoint between the inventory optimization and the supply optimizer. And me as a supply planner, I can go in and make sure that the numbers all look correct and make sense. And it's sort of a nice checkpoint to do a sanity check and make sure that all of the numbers look good. Um, so what I'm going to do is be able to show you where we see um, Anthony's changes as an inventory planner. So here is our safety stock and we see here is the 500 that Anthony overrode to um, put as the safety stock. But then I can come in as a supply planner and override that and I decide that I want even more safety stock because the, the stakes are extremely high. We know that we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of demand um, and I wanna make sure that we have even more safety stock than, um, than Anthony recommended. So being able to kind of override that is also another nice manual checkpoint to see if um, you know everything looks good or if I have additional information about my area maybe i'm in new jersey and i know that we're going to have an extra spike in demand so i want another um spike in inventory and knowing that previously last year as we kind of said in the beginning we actually missed our start of production when we um the date that we should have started ramping up and we missed a lot of sales because we were stocked out 
And so I know that this year the pressure is on to make sure that we aren't going to stock out, that our customers will always go into Target and Walmart and be able to see our products on the shelves and buy them for their Super Bowl parties. So now I'm going to run the supply optimizer and that will basically take into account a lot of different things. Um, so it will be able to take into account the increase in demand, also the increase in inventory, and also my manual override, my extreme increase um, in safety stock. And it'll make sure that it is delivering all of those, delivering the demand and also delivering the um, inventory extra safety stock. So I think one of the places that you can see the impact of the supply optimizer the best, um, and it really is a powerful tool, is going into the capacity tab. So one of our main problems in this situation is when should we start producing, ramping up production for our Super Bowl? Now, take into account that we have about a three, four week lead time, that's about a month. So we don't want to be scrambling in February, knowing that we don't have enough stock like we were last year. Um, with IBP, we're able to see end to end and really have that visibility into the supply chain and know through the supply optimizer when exactly we should start production, ramping up production. So here you can see that we're producing, we're using 100% of our capacity um, of our resource in December and January. So that tells me as a supply planner, when it comes to December, we're really going to have to have all hands on deck, really um, operating at 100% capacity. And that even tells me that maybe I want to add another shift or hire more people to make sure that we're really meeting our demand and that we're not stocking out, that our customers are able to buy our products and really watch the Super Bowl with um, our beverage in hand. Another thing that is almost equally as, poor, as important is knowing that in March and April, there isn't that increase in demand. There um, isn't going to be, you know, the same sort of event as the Super Bowl where you have 100 million people watching and a lot of different Super Bowl get togethers and Super, Super Bowl parties. So we know that there's not going to be that demand. And being in the consumer product industry, we know that there is a cyclical sort of demand um, that will probably increase again in May to June um, because it will be like Memorial Day in the summer. But in March and April, we want to know how can we, how does the supply optimizer deal with the decline in demand? And knowing that the supply optimizer takes into account the different cost rates it will produce a cost optimal plan to make sure that we're not paying for inventory in our distribution centers and also um, producing this product when there's just not that demand. And so you can see here, we're producing at only 40 and 50%. We're only using 40 to 50% of our resource in February and March. That's also, again, taking into account our lead time and planning ahead for March and April, um, knowing that there just isn't that demand that there was um, in February. So being able to see that really clearly and know that the supply optimizer is taking into account the decrease in demand and is planning for that just as well as it's planning for the huge spike in demand and inventory. Um, and knowing that the supply optimizer is also taking into account the cost rates and producing a really cost optimal plan to make sure that you're not only meeting that consumer spike in demand, but you're also accounting for the cost rates that would um, happen and the in increasing costs that would happen if we were producing too much and stocking too much of our product in March and April. So now we're going to go just kind of wrap it up again. Um, and yeah, so what we saw today was that the main situation at hand, we saw that there's a huge surge in demand and also a manual increase in inventory demand in February to meet that Super Bowl spike. 
um, we wanted to make sure that we as a company understand our spike in demand and our cyclical demand and can plan for that in a cost optimal way that's not um, throwing away a necessary, like unnecessary products, but also is making sure that we have our products on the shelves when our customers go into Target and Walmart and really want to buy it instead of, you know, stocking out like we did last year and our customers go into our competitors' products. Um, so through the use of inventory and supply optimizers, we were able to create first an inventory plan that was really cost optimal, that took into account all the different variabilities and really buffered for uncertainty. Um, and then that really feeds into the supply optimizer. And the supply optimizer can take into account demand, inventory, and the different cost rates to produce a cost optimal um, really business plan. And I just want to stress that inventory and supply optimizers work together really well and they're a really powerful tool when used together because you can buffer for the uncertainty and have an optimal inventory plan and then have the supply optimizer come in and really plan for that plan and make sure that we are not hitting our inventory requirements um, and then also creating a cost optimal uh, solution that is feasible and that doesn't require any manual leveling or anything of that sort. Um, so thank you so much for taking 30 minutes of your time today on this Wednesday. Uh, we hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, if you have any questions, our email and LinkedIn are on the screen. And yeah, so have a really great rest of your day.